Hello everybody, this is going to be a little unboxing slash setup tutorial slash review of the Transcend Drive Pro 200 dash cam. Now, I'm not by any means a dash cam expert. This is just the result of me watching a few tutorials and reading a few reviews on the internet over the past couple of days. So really the goal of this video is going to be to show you what it would actually be like to buy one of these things and set it up in your own car. So we'll see how I do. Just really quickly, the reason that I selected this particular dash cam is because it's fairly cheap and honestly some of the features on this look better than the more expensive ones that are floating around out there. For example, the viewing angle on this one is 160 degrees, meaning that you can really see way to either side, like much more than you could if say you were shooting a video on your phone. So it should be able to see a lot of the road conditions around the car. Also shoots in full 1080p HD, does quite well at night, and it comes with an included 16GB micro SD card, which isn't too surprising since Transcend primarily makes memory cards. Now when you first buy this camera, this box comes inside of this one. I've already opened it up to take a peek, but I'll just show you what comes in the box. First of all, you have the camera itself, which is honestly a little bigger than I was expecting it to be. It's very light, has a screen on the back, pretty good sized lens. Also comes with a very long power cable. The reason for this is so you can tuck it out of view, so it's not a tripping hazard, it doesn't look ugly, so on and so forth. The way dash cams work, if you're not familiar, basically, you know, this thing is plugged into the cigarette lighter in the car. So when the car turns on, the camera receives power. When the camera receives power, it turns on and starts recording. So every time you start the car, it automatically starts shooting video, which is pretty nice. So it's just like a no-hassle thing. You won't forget to turn the camera on. That's very standard. Pretty much every dash cam in the world does that. Also comes with this little mounting thing that sticks to the windshield. An owner's manual in about 10 different languages. Here's the included micro SD card. A little cable so you can view the videos this way if you'd like to. And apparently this thing also has a feature where it generates its own little Wi-Fi hotspot and you can connect using your phone and their special app and view the footage. Not something I'm planning on using, but it's there if that interests you. So really, that's about all there is to say about this thing straight out of the box. So I'm going to go outside where it's a nice, warm, balmy 25 degrees and freeze to death while I install this thing. Then we'll take a look at some of the footage that comes off of it and see how easy that is to uh, work with, how good the quality is, so on and so forth. So, I'll see you out in my car. Okay. So I guess this just slides in and locks. No. There we go. So this little thing is just on top of it. And it works like a little mini tripod, I guess. So now I'll try to stick it somewhere where it's not too horribly in the way or obvious. I want to make sure that nothing's in the way of its view either. Maybe like that. Okay, so I decided it might make sense if I power the thing on and look through the little screen to make sure it is, you know, the view isn't obstructed or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this thing in and start the car. Alright, so let's see what actually happens when you start the car up with this thing plugged in. Here's the initial setup screen. Well, this is an awkward angle for me. So I want English. Oh, is there a... Oh, I see. Use the buttons on the bottom. So. Now i got to set the time. Up, oh, no memory card. But at least I can see what the view looks like. Helps if we take this thing off. Let's find a good spot. Okay, I think that might be the winner right there. <clears throat> Alright, 
it's on. And the viewing angle looks great. And I kind of hid it behind the mirror so it wouldn't be shining in my face, but I can still see it. Looks like a good deal. Alright, so I'm just looking through the settings now. One neat thing here you can see, you have the option to shoot in one minute, three minute, or five minute intervals. There's little clips that go back to back. Just a matter of preference, whatever you think would be easiest in locating the particular thing that you're looking for that you recorded while on the road. There's a bunch of other settings on here too. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting it's not a touch screen. <laughs> it's spoiled. All kinds of things. Okay, so what I've done now is I've taken this little cord that goes into it and I've tucked it in up here along the top of the windshield and now I've popped off this little, I forget what the actual name is for it, but it's like the side column here and I'm going to try to run it down this and then down around underneath here and up to the cigarette lighter, tucking any of the excess cord behind the glove compartment there. So let's see how this actually works. I've never really done anything quite like this before. What's really interesting up here is as you tear this off, it's basically, at least in my Toyota Avalon, it's attached by some Velcro-like substance, so it just goes right back, which is really nice. I never expected it to be so easy to tuck something in up there. All right, I'm gonna chalk up taking off this side panel thing. as one of the worst mistakes of my life. <laughs> This thing, I've been wrestling with this thing for about 10 minutes trying to get it to go back. Of course, that's probably more the result of a plastic part in a 15-year-old car that's never been taken off before than uh, an issue with installing a dash cam in general. Hopefully, you won't have as much trouble as I did with that. Anyway, so now what I've done, I've taken the cord, it goes up along here in the top, down through this, then switches over here at the bottom. Now I'm working on tucking it in here next to the door. Look at that, I'm amazed at how well it disappeared. Now what I'm going to do when it's not 20 degrees out is buy some sort of like sticky wire holder and uh, kind of attach this to the top down here below the passenger's feet. For now, I'm just going to let that dangle down there. But, uh, you see the last section here is just tucked underneath this part. And then it just comes up here, very unobstructively, plugs into the cigarette lighter. And look at that. It's nice and permanent. I like it. Now let's see how this thing actually works. Okay, so right now we are in my parking garage, and I thought this would be a good chance to uh, test out just how well this thing is going to do in awkward lighting situations, because it's kind of dark in here, but there's a lot of light pouring in from the sides, and sometimes cameras have trouble picking that sort of thing up. So this would be a real good example of that right here. So if this thing is doing well with this awkward lighting, I'll be pretty impressed. So to the right, you can see St. Louis's brand new Ikea going up, still under construction. And of course, now we have a little driving footage here, right over one of our many beautiful road plates with all the construction going on. So now we're going to get on the highway and see how this thing does. 40 miles per hour in the left lane, that was great. One thing I failed to mention before is that uh, you can set the amount of time that you want the screen to stay on after the car turns on. So I have the screen on the dash cam set to turn off a minute after the car starts. So that way you don't have the screen, you know, especially at night, staying on and you know casting light in your face or anything. So that's a nice feature.
Now, if you want to view or save footage from the dash cam on your computer, I suppose you could bring it in and uh, I believe it comes with a USB cable or something. But I think a much easier method is to just eject the little micro SD card from the camera after you shut it off. And if your computer does not have a micro SD card reader, either buy a micro SD to SD card adapter if you have an SD card reader, or if you don't, you can also buy a USB micro SD card reader and just pull the file straight onto your computer. And of course, you could also use that Wi Fi capability and view stuff on your phone if you'd like to. This is just my personal preference. So let's take a look at how this actually came out. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at how this actually works. So I'm looking at uh, the files that are on the SD card that were in the dash cam. And you can see here there's three folders. This is nothing in it, but supposedly this P video folder is where videos go if you hit the emergency button on the side so the file gets saved indefinitely until you get rid of it. And I haven't done that yet. And the regular files when you're just driving around are in this N video folder here. What happens to these, once the card runs out of space, it starts going back and overwriting the files at the beginning. So that way you never have to worry about running out of room or getting rid of old ones. It also means that if you don't hit that emergency button, you need to make sure to save any videos that you want to save before the camera loops around and gets rid of the old files. And you can see I set this thing to record in five minute increments. And we'll just take a look and see how big one of these five minute files is. And it looks like it comes in right around 600 megabytes. So that's not too bad. Something else I was curious to see here is how well these videos loop together. So I've opened up my video editor of choice, which is Final Cut, and I'm just going to take a little section of the end of this clip and a little section of the end of this or the beginning of this clip, and we'll see how smoothly the two of them go together if there's anything that's missing. And that looked flawless right there.